In this video, we're going to talk about what it means for a function to be continuous. There's a, a great informal definition of continuity that almost every calculus textbook gives, and most lectures that you hear on continuity start off with this one. There's a reason for it. It's good, so I'm going to repeat it as well. Uh, most people would say that a function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. It's very simple, but it's, it's also very accurate as well. If you, if you could draw a function like, like this one here and not pick up your pencil, we would call this a continuous function. If you tried to draw it and let's say you drew a portion of it and then you stopped somewhere and you picked up your pencil and then you started somewhere else, this would be a discontinuous function because there's this break right here. So it's a very informal definition, but it's also a quick, easy way of understanding continuity. All right now we're going to look at a more formal definition here. Now, all right, we would say that a function is continuous at a particular point. Notice there's a change here. Now I'm not talking about the whole function. I'll do that in a minute, but we're talking about at a particular point C, your function would be continuous there if three things happened. Um, first of all, to keep it from breaking apart like this, you would need the limit as x approaches c if for f of x. You, you would need that to exist. Because if that limit didn't exist from the left and the right, that means it must not be going to the same place like this guy. So if they had differing limits from the left and the right, uh, then it could not be continuous, obviously. But that's not enough because see, think, see if you can think of an example where the limit might exist at a place, but it still might not be continuous. Hopefully you're thinking about something like this where you've got a, a limit that exists, maybe at a point like right here, but maybe at C, the f of c, the function value defined at c, is somewhere else. That would not be continuous either. So that brings us to number two. f of c exists. Okay, so both of these things exist. The limit exists at c and the function value exists at c. But even those two together are not enough because look at this picture here. There's still a problem. The function value exists, it's right here, and the limit exists. Limit L is right about there. The problem is, is these guys are not together. So the last step says that whatever your limit is, the limit as X approaches C for F of X, that has to match F of C. Now we'll do some examples uh, in, in a later video, but for the, uh, this video, we're just gonna suffice it to say that these three things have to exist. You can imagine how an example would go if they asked you to show that x squared was continuous at 5. You just have to run down these three bullet points. Show that the limit as x approaches 5 exists, uh, 5 squared exists, and the limit is the same as f of 5. Right? You just run through these three things here and that suffices to show that it's continuous at a point. But now how do we extend that to saying that your function just is continuous, not at individual points, but how would you say it's just a continuous function? Well, it's very simple. We say that your function is continuous on a whole entire interval if it's continuous at every point in the interval. This is very simple. So uh, we would say that this function drawn right here between A and B is a continuous function on this interval because if you pick any random c value or any random x value like right here is continuous there and it's continuous there basically saying that there's no breaks jumps holes asymptotes anything like that that messes up between a and b all right now uh, if you're very astute you might have caught me a little bit here you might have said well wait a second Devin let's take a closer look at these endpoints because you know when you're running through those three uh, items that that bullet point list of three items uh, if, like for instance this point right here f of b that exists but when you get real technical about it what is the limit as x approaches b well if you remember your very technical limit discussions that was what the function approaches from the left and the right hand side of b and it approaches some number from the left but it doesn't approach anything from the right. It's not even defined to the right of B. So if you're being very technical about it, this limit would not exist. So you might be inclined to say, 
hmm, well, I guess maybe it's not continuous at the endpoints. But if you pick any point on the inside of the interval, the open interval A to B, it would certainly be continuous there. But these um, these endpoints pose a little bit of a problem. Where, well, you know, naturally, I mean, just looking at the at the picture we have here, it's pretty clear that it it satisfies the conditions that we're after as far as continuity is concerned. So what we what we do is when we're talking about endpoints, we assume what we're talking about is being continuous just from the left of the right endpoint and from the right of the left endpoint. So we're going to kind of overlook the fact that it might not be defined on the left side of A and the right side of B. Well, it suffices for the endpoints to use one-sided limits as opposed to two-sided limits. So here's a, here's a quick example. Let's try to show that f of x equals the square root function is continuous on the closed interval 0 to 9. Now just looking at the graph, of course it is. There's no breaks, holes, jumps, asymptotes, anything in this thing. You can draw it without picking up your pencil. But um, but let's, let's do it a little bit more formally. So for any value, I called it A, between 0 and 9, non-inclusive, on the inside of A, where you have points to the left of A and the right of A. Even if A is 0.001, you could find something a little to the left of that and a little to the right of that. Then it suffices to say, just by the properties of limits, that the limit as x approaches a anywhere between zero and nine for the square root of function for the square root function would be the square root of a. That's perfectly clear, and that matches f of a. Like if you just wanted to take a and stick it in square root of x, you would get square root of a. That's very clear. But here we have to handle these endpoints separately. <clears throat> we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, right? The only side we're obviously looking from, it would go to 0, which, lucky for us, matches the square root of 0. That's f of 0. And the limit as x approaches 9 from the left, that's what this little minus sign means, of the square root function would give you 3 which is the square root of 9. That's f of 3. And so hopefully it's pretty clear what I'm talking about here. If I did not allow myself these little one-sided limits that I just erased here, these limits would not have been 0 and 3. It would have been does not exist. And unfortunately, that would not have matched f of 0 and f of 9. These would have been not equals. But uh, that's that's not what we did. We, we looked at one-sided limits when you're talking about closed intervals like what we had. So we have from the right and from the left. All right, just closing up here, what are some types of continuous functions? Well, I broke these down into two categories. Um, the ones that are always continuous would be things like polynomials. That includes, and you can jot these down, linear functions or polynomials, straight lines, quadratics or polynomials, cubics or polynomials and and the reason is pretty clear i'm going to erase this here just so it doesn't take up too much space but if you had x squared minus 5x plus 7 you see how there's no chance to have division by zero or a negative under a square root or you know a negative inside of a logarithm or any bad thing there's nothing bad that could happen here no division by zero or anything so those would be continuous everywhere always uh, same thing for like sine x. If you're familiar with that trig function, it just goes up, down, up, down, up, down, forever in both directions. Uh, it's obviously continuous. Same thing for cosine x. The cosine graph, that's continuous. So these two are trig functions. Uh, functions like exponential functions are always great, like e to the x. If you're familiar with the graph of e to the x, where it's exponential growth. There's no breaks or jumps or holes or asymptotes in that graph either. So these four are continuous always and forever on the whole real number line. Now there are other continuous functions that are continuous in their own respective domains. For instance, notice I did not list uh, tangent in this list. Well, tangent of x being defined as sine over cosine do you see how every time cosine is zero, every time cosine hits zero, you'll have division by zero. That would give you an asymptote. Now, okay, so it's not continuous there, 
but that those places where the asymptotes are are not even in the domain of tangent so um, it is continuous everywhere in this domain the only problem is is you have some asymptotes which show points that are not in the domain of tangent uh, similar flavor to that type of concept the natural log graph has an asymptote at the y-axis it kind of looks like this uh, it's continuous everywhere in this domain you see there's no breaks or holes in this graph but it's not defined for negative x values it's only defined for positive x values uh, the last one I, I can think of right off the top of my head are rational functions rational functions these are the ones that have fractions you know something like f of x equals uh, just one over x minus two that's just a simple one you can plug in any x and it'll be fine any x is okay three four seven negative two uh, negative one point five whatever but do not plug in x equals two right x is not allowed to be two it's not in the domain of f of x uh, it would create an asymptote an, an asymptote if you're familiar with these types of graphs at x equals two you'd have a vertical asymptote here and your graph would look something kind of like that so it's continuous you can draw it without picking up your pencil except for that point of, of two of course now where are these important why why do we study continuity so much well a lot of reasons but uh, as far as what's pertinent to the beginning of your calc 1 class is it's important to know when you're evaluating limits uh, specifically analytically because when you evaluate limits analytically what you're doing a lot of times is taking the value and plugging it into the function if you're allowed but now the if you're allowed depends on if your function is continuous or not so j just to close with a real super simple example let's say we we're looking at the limit as x approaches 2 for 3x plus 1 I know we're getting a little off track of this videos topic here but we'll just go ahead and finish this out you could evaluate this limit analytically by plugging in 2 now how do you know you can plug in 2 because normally limits don't really care what happens at C why, why are we allowed to plug in 2 here why well, I, I look at this function here 3x plus 1 and I say to myself oh hey cool this is a polynomial it's continuous so whatever the function value is will match the limit because there can't be a discrepancy right the, you remember how the limit agrees with the function value so if you have a continuous function you can just pop in this c value and that'll be your limit like in this case it'll be seven so uh, if your function was not continuous you couldn't do this so it's very important to understand have a good understanding of continuity especially when you're studying limits but um, obviously there's other reasons to know about continuity as well but that's just a good practical application right there so anyway I hope you understand continuity a little bit better I understand we did not do a lot of examples in this video uh, look for some uh, continuity example videos to be coming up soon